We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record button. That's well. Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> this is another episode of uh, Italo Black Dog Radio, and here's Italo speaking to. Uh, I'm not. I don't say Duffy. Is it Duffy Hudson, or it's, am I saying it right? No, you're saying it right, Duffy. Yeah, Duffy Hudson. Duffy. Okay. How are you? Uh, I am good. I am good. I'm. I'm talking to. Edgar Allan Poe in the flesh. Ah. <laughs> ah, well, um, so it's close to the flesh right? as we have, I guess. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> so Duffy is actually going to be uh, impersonating Edgar Allan Poe in the upcoming production of Edgar Allan Poe, which is the, the name of the of the show as well. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, this is basically going to be work um, at the Actors Workout Studio on Lancashire Boulevard here in North Hollywood. Uh, if you yeah. want to find out about tickets and shows, I'll give you the information below. You can actually go below, and then there's going to be links to the show and the times and all the ticket information is below. But I want to dive right into it because I... I Growing up, and I, by the way, I grew up in Peru. I, I was born here and grew up in Peru. But growing uh-huh. up, um, I actually was very intrigued with Al- Edgar Allan Poe, even though English was not my first language. Um, I found him so fascinating because he had this m- mastermind. He was just so uh, intriguing to me. And also the short stories were captivating even now, as a kid, I was that was basically one of my you know um, idols as far as literary writers uh, because uh-huh. not only did he do poetry, not only did he dive into uh, short stories, and of course he's a master of sus- suspense. And of course later on, you know all the movies and all the different interpretations of these uh, uh, novels. Uh, that became movies, um, but also mm-hmm. it's just he's just an enigmatic person to me, and uh, I don't oh, know yeah. why. Still to this day, he's very very scary yet fascinating person to to study, and I'm sure you know that. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he was a very interesting character, no no doubt about that. Very intelligent, uh, easily the smartest man in the room wherever he was. Uh, he wrote. Uh, you know, he was, he began as a poet, and he, he always considered himself a poet. But uh, he uh, he's credited with uh, with inventing the short story, although short stories have been written before, but uh, none had 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 any kind of uh, popular success, and and so uh, he he really popularized uh, the invention of the short story, and uh, wrote many of them, and. Uh, and then he also, um, you know, invented the uh, the detective story, and that that could be pretty much attributed to to him. And and that detective story is really the same formula that uh, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle used when he created Sherlock Holmes uh, some fifty years later. And um, you know, it's it's very much the same uh, same formula that you see on CSI shows. You know, um, it's mm. interesting because in the, the very first detective story, the detective the detective shows up on a crime scene uh, a couple of days after the crime, and the and the scene has been um, well. The the actual the witness, the, all the uh, evidence has been tampered with because people have been there, so the the crime scene has been contaminated, as they say. And Poke, mm-hmm. you know, this detective does like forensics work. I mean, it's really really brilliant stuff. He was a brilliant man, right? Yeah, troubled. Yeah, it, it, you know, certainly. It, yes, <laughs> that's for sure. And that's what we that's what I we mean, deal at, with, and you know, explain, and, and that's what we deal with in the show. You know, we show those major influences in his life, and how he he sort of uh, the nurture part of nature, nurture how my, how he sort of became more morose, and uh, and how that all sort of kind of came about, and how that reflected in his writing, and all through his own right. words. I mean, Edgar Allan Poe comes out and tells these stories. Yeah. 
<clears throat> right. So what, what was the inspiration behind taking this to the stage? For me? Mm -hmm. um, For you. You know, I, very similar to you, I was very young. I was nine years old, and my father read The Raven to me. And um, it was really trippy. I mean, he's reading The Raven to me on on an early October evening, probably around this time of the year. I was just nine years old. He walks into my bedroom. He reads The Raven, and the lights are dim, and he reads the whole thing very dramatically. And I'm like, you know, I'm nine years old. I'm thinking, this is kind of spooky. And then I'm thinking, it's kind of sad. And I'm thinking, it's kind of kind of weird and i'm like and 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 he uh he said that he, he thought that we should memorize it and um and and perform it for the family on oh. halloween and and so i started to memorize it and uh I, I don't believe he ever he ever did i think either it was a ruse to to get me to read or he had every intention of of doing it but uh just never did and uh but but anyway but then uh poe became became a part of my psyche and uh, somebody who I always liked and I was always interested in it. Uh, so it started very early for me. And uh, several years ago, I just received a, an invitation from a, a booking agency that was booking um, small one person shows of historical characters. And I didn't have one. Mm. I didn't have a show, but, uh, but the, mm. the invitation to, to, to perform was there and actors are always looking for a gig. And, and so I, I, um, I thought of uh, Poe and I called him up and uh, made a pitch and they said, yeah, sure. And so they started booking it. And of course I had to put the show together and I've done it probably over a thousand times since. And uh, okay. I have a lot of luck with it. It worked, goes very well. I've been, been very fortunate with it. So the, you uh, yeah, basically already weekend. have, yeah, this weekend actually. Yeah. Uh, and next I weekend, believe yeah. it's going to start. Yeah. Actually I'm going to see, Tonight, actually, I'm going to go see um, Fallen Saints. And uh, I'm not sure when, get, when I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm seeing Fallen Saints today. On Saturday. Uh, tonight, I should say. No, yeah. I thought it was today, tonight. I guess no, I but yours. Tomorrow. You're right. Yeah. And mine is Sunday. <laughs> yours is Sunday. Okay. My show. So I think that's what yeah, I, got, I got confused. But uh, yeah, basically, I was talking to uh, Carrie, uh, the writer for. Um, Fallen Saints, and I found uh -huh. that story as, as fascinating as Poe's. Uh, but That's my first inclination was Poe because, yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's very um, dramatic and it reminded me of the Crucible. I was telling him because you know of the yeah uh, witch hunt and all that. But um, yeah, I think his, so, his story is very. It's not uh, historically uh, inspired more than. It's a different take. He's, he's taking a different route on it, and I loved it. Well, I'm like, okay, you know, that's a different I, I, take. I, I, it's like thematically, you know, um, it, it becomes the, it, it does become this witch hunt, right, in the room. Did you, you saw it, right? Yeah. yeah so I have not seen witch hunt the show. Room. Oh, well, I mean, I've seen the crucible, really but yeah, okay. it, it, right, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I, I like what he did with it. I really like the show. It's a lot of fun. And it's a little spooky, and so that's what's great about it. Okay. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so well, it's, it's, it's I look a good forward to seeing that tonight. Wonderful. So, what can people expect uh, from Edgar Allan Poe if they want to see? Well, it? Um, it, it, it's really they, they've, there's a lot to it. Um, I will. Uh, I'm gonna. The the opening is a is is a transformation. So I will transform from me into Poe. Uh, while mm. explaining how and telling the stories of how I became interested in Poe. And, um, and that's really interesting because you'll just see, because I'll just walk in in street clothes and uh, you'll see an, an actor, just, just a guy, just a person, you know, going into the, the transformation into a character. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And that's an actor's job. And, I'll, and it's, people find that very interesting. I find it interesting and fun to do. And then, um, and then once I'm in the in the costume, then the lights go out and the show begins. And and Edgar comes back as if almost as if he's at the end of his life, and uh, you know, and 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 his life is flashing before his eyes. And he tells the story of the main events of his life while performing uh, the Telltale Heart and the Raven and Annabelle Lee. And these things all, uh, it's really so. So the, you'll get all that. You'll get a real sense of. Uh, of the tormented portion of Edgar. Uh, the show's only an hour long, so you can't really show 
everything, you know. Uh, but I, I thought mm-hmm. um, since his his work is very dark, uh, uh, I would share with the audience the major influences that created that that sort of dark point of view that he had. So that's what you get and can expect, okay. and it's really dramatic. I mean, it's really dramatic. So I think there'll be it's right. a lot of fun. Well, I, I love yeah. drama, but Edgar was and I love suspense, and uh, yeah, it's just perfect for. And the month of October, which happens to be my birthday, was uh, was it uh, the second? And so every yeah, every yeah, year yeah. around this time, I get into the mode that okay, my month is uh, macar <laughs> macabre, as we say in Spanish, and it's very dark, and I kind of like that. <laughs> uh, we we, yeah. we get in touch with our. Um, our uh, dark side, which is uh, yeah. just as fascinating to me as, as every other story, but we have to have that, right? We have to have the the protagonist, and then you have the antagonist, and you have the, the drama and the mystery, and uh, there is that's yeah. theater. I mean, in a, theater, in a man. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, that's yes. what it's all about. And October, so I am looking forward. For I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, uh, yeah, October is the month for it. And, uh, and there's a lot of... Uh, uh, one, uh, the downside is, uh, is there's a lot of theater going on uh, around uh, Halloween and, and scary stuff. And, and that's great. And I love it. But I've got a lot of competition in terms of getting people uh, to come to the theater. So I'm really happy that you're... Uh, well... You know, that we're talking today. Yeah, I mean you can you can go to a horror uh, what do you call it uh, horror nights and you can go to the maze and you can do that. Uh, that's yeah, not all that scary is. to me. I mean that that is scary, of course, at the moment. Sort of like the uh, Pennywise uh, clown, it scares you for a yeah. second, but then you realize it's fake and you realize it's not. You know, it doesn't stay with you past the movie. Yeah, it's just funny. It's just uh, that I think that's funny. I don't know. And I have a twisted kind of humor myself, so I see that, and sure, I get scared, and there, but it doesn't stay with me as, let's say, um, Blair Witch Project, which stay with me for a little bit, uh, or The Exorcist, yeah. or The Shining, you know, those classic tale uh, oh. horror movies that don't the show. really stayed with me. Yes. Come on. I mean, we have to go back to the root of the uh, the seventies. To me, was probably in Psycho, and obviously every and even some of the uh, because I think I I watched uh, when I was a kid. I and I was probably nine, ten, like yourself, and I was watching House of Usher. I think it was called. Yeah, um, Fall in the House of Usher. I might it might be wrong, right? And so that was uh, Edgar Allan Poe's uh, story, and. Um, I was fascinated by it, just uh, the, the the language, and it was probably the language and the the costumes or whatever it was. Um, yeah. Because he obviously 1800. Um, so yeah, it, it's this a different world, but at the same time, um, you know, you can actually relate. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's yeah. interesting about the movies. Uh, the uh, the one piece of writing literature that that has inspired the most movies in the world is the Bible, of course. Mm-hmm. And second mm-hmm. was Shakespeare, and third is Edgar mm-hmm. Allan Poe. There have literally mm-hmm. been thousands of movies based on Edgar Allan Poe's work, thousands of them. Um, and his right. work is much better than the movies turn out to be. You know his his you know the of course. The Fall of the House of Usher is a much better story than the movie ever became. It's a much, a much better story, an interesting story, you know. But uh, yeah, but he, he's an interesting fellow, and I, I really, yeah, I'm glad, and I'm glad that you have an interest in him. I find that that wonder, that's really cool. Yeah, well, uh, when I was growing up, and and also during high school, I was, I had to read that, and uh, um, literature to me was just um, fascinating. Um, but also, I remember, I don't know if you probably know this uh, short story where there, there was a tra- uh, treasure chest and there was a manuscript and he had to decode the language and he explains, he goes into very specific details as to how he broke down the uh, the treasure map. Message in a bottle? Maybe. That's, Is this I don't message know the, in a bottle? The name. 
it was fascinating. I was like, this is the best thing I've ever read. How did he do that? How did oh, he Gold manage Bug. to... Oh, Yeah, because he was, he goes into very specific detail as to, okay, there's these many oh, yeah. E's in the, in the alphabet, in the, uh, I guess, in the vocabulary of English. There's more E's than A's, and he explained it so oh, well. He was, um, and I was like, he was big on that, you oh, know. God, yeah. He loved that. Uh, well, he would... Um, he worked for magazines, you know, as a, as a, as that was his job. He worked in magazines and he would always publish every week or every month. He would pr- publish a cryptogram, which was a, you know, mm. a thing in code and uh, people tried to code it and decode it. And That's the last weird. one, one of the last ones he ever, he ever published uh, to date has never been really deciphered. People are still going, they still mm. argue about what the, what, what the actual code was, uh, what it was code for. <laughs> But he loved he loved creating oh, so he, codes. Most of them were really simple ones, but uh, some of them were a little more complicated. Okay. He made them up out of his top of his head. He's wow. an interesting fellow. He came up with the idea <laughs> of the. Uh, this is the guy Edgar Allan Poe thought of the Big Bang, the theory of the Big Bang, first. Yeah. Back in 1846, he he wrote down he wrote that he thought that the universe was created in a in a, in a Big Bang. I don't know if he used those exact words in a big explosion. He did say a, in a big explosion, uh, and and he described the Big Bang very much like we still describe it. And that was his theory about mm-hmm. how the universe began, which is kind of interesting. Uh, to you know, that was fifty very, years, not fifty, thirty years before Einstein was born, which is kind of interesting. Mm, okay. See, I mean, some some things are stranger than. Uh, Stranger than fiction, I guess I should say, because that was back then. Uh, yeah, fiction, I would right? say. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, what do you know? I mean, same as Jules Jules Verne. Um, he came Verne, up with yeah. so many things that we nowadays we we take it for granted, but he's he came up with so many ideas. Um, sure, you know, Star- 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 Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I mean, uh, those the moon, and, and now we all have our. We have our little communicator, and we don't even have to flip it like if like he used to have to do. You know, it's interesting. Right. right? It's really wild. Right. So for those for those millennials that don't know, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, I was going to go on a rant. We had a. <laughs> I got a. Uh, I got a millennial review uh, that appeared on uh, Better Lemons yesterday. Oh. Okay. And um, it was a fantastic review. And uh, it was so great to get it from, uh, you know, a college student. She was like, this is fantastic. I think she's even younger than a millennial. What's after millennials? Mm. I, don't, I don't even know. I get it. I'm all I don't know. by that. Is that <laughs> are they in their 20s now? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, no, but actually, I, like, I, like, I used to, like you said, um, we read this when I was, we were in, in our pre-teens, you know, before teenager. Yeah. And even then, I realized I was reading a masterpiece, right? Um, so I yes. think, I don't yes. think, because now we have the, um, what do you call it? Uh, politically correct things to read to a child, um, yeah. or politically correct things yeah. to educate, how, how to educate your kids and what to tell them, what not to show them and, and censor them and all that. But I, I don't know. I mean, back, back in the days when I'm talking about the seventies, um, there was not much of that and I didn't turn out to be no. such a... Lunatic. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, think I am a lunatic, but... Uh, no, I, they, we become a, a bit overprotective and over uh, overviewing of our society. Everybody everybody thinks they have a... Everybody wants everything to be perfect, and, and, and so everyone gets sticks their nose in everybody else's business. It's really weird. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what's happened with uh, Edgar, uh, even, even Edgar Allan Poe, who was absolutely fundamental in American literature. Uh, some schools now have decided not to teach him and, and they've opted Ooh. for more modern writers. And you go, well, that's not the history of American literature as far as I'm concerned. They're also banning right. um, Huck, Huckleberry Finn. And you go, God almighty. But yeah. you know, there was that word in there. But uh, certainly, uh, ben. certainly Mark Twain was, uh, well, obviously Mark Twain was an abolitionist. But uh, but but the book has that word in it, and um, and so they want to ban that book, and it, and then, and that book is instrumental in uh, in the, in the, in, the, in the development of American literature. It's just so fundamental. 
So I don't know how. Right. You, I don't know why we ban in books. It's well, just so strange. They they ban such such things as the Bible. They ban such things as uh, Where's Waldo? Uh, believe it or not, because it was they banned the, Where's Waldo. Up, <laughs> I kid you I not. I didn't know that. Yes, um, and also Alice in Wonderland because of the uh, um, the, drug? the drug use, uh, right? The the mushrooms, okay. and I think uh, what else? Um, that the little the character the car- the caterpillar that was smoking. Yeah, um, caterpillars. Yeah, stoned. Yeah, yeah, because we've never seen a caterpillar wow. smoking, but. <laughs> Wow. And also, uh, I, I know this because I was researching it one day, and I was like, I cannot believe they pick on children's books to 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 ban from schools. Um, also, uh, what was the other one? Um, well, one Wizard of Oz actually. That was another one. And I forgot what was the reason. Oh, I I know why. Because Dorothy was such a female. Um, Heroine, uh, you know, she she became a hero of the story, right? And and we yeah. had no uh, say so in the society. And how dare you uh, put her in the middle of your story and all that? And something like that. And like I can believe people are weird. And so people are weird. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so children, you should you should read uh, Edgar Allan Poe. You're not going to be traumatized. No, no, no. It's it's just it's just really and it, and the literate it's so beautifully written, and it will it will raise it will raise your IQ by reading it, just like listening mm-hmm. to Mozart will raise your IQ. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you know, if you read smart stuff, you become smart. If you read dumb stuff, you become dumb. I think you know you are what you right. you are what you do you are what you read you are what you eat you are what you think you are this is who you are so you might as well surround yourself right. with great works of art. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Um, so once again, I want to remind people that are listening, uh, we're talking to um, the actor of uh, Edgar Allan Poe, <laughs> Duffy Huston. I'm not, I'm looking for Duffy Hudson's here. And so, yes, uh, this this show is only going to be two more weeks, actually, two more weekends. Yeah, just next um, Sunday. Yeah, I do it all Sunday. over the You're liable to catch me doing it anywhere. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm and down, are you uh, I'm down are, are you California resident or are you? Yeah, I live, live here. You uh-huh. Okay. I, I, I lived. Uh, I was born in Ohio, and then I lived a long time in New York City. The theater, you know, Broadway, off Broadway theater, for years, and then moved out mm-hmm. here. And I'm uh, doing these one man mm-hmm. shows. I, I do a lot of them, so I have a lot of fun with that. I do Einstein. I do George Burns. I do Houdini. I do a lot of fun. One man show. Wow. And is, is it always Sorry. based on um, based on a character or a historical figure? Yeah, usually. I mean, I do okay. a Christmas Carol where I do the do Charles Dickens novel. I do the book, and I play like thirty mm. different characters. But it's always something that you know, piece of literature or yeah, those are the ones I'm doing. Great. So this basically yeah. is a force a of nature production, and you have to come see it because. Uh, we got to celebrate um, All Hallows' Eve, which is uh, another term for Halloween. Kids uh, should know that. And uh, Edgar Allan Poe is basically the, the main focus of the story, but it's also the transition between uh, Duffy, the actor, to Poe, the the character of the story. So that's, that yeah. sounds fascinating already. It's pretty cool. uh, it's pretty cool. And actually, right below, uh, right below the link that you're listening on, which is uh, Black Talk Radio, there will be a link to. And I'm actually I'm watching the, um, the the website, which has your uh, your pictures, and they look really great. I see the uh, <clears throat> the candles, and you see the the him com- being converted into uh, turning into yeah. O in front of your eyes. And that looks amazing. Is that a picture of you lighting the ca- the candles? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. That's cool. So you can actually see uh, the actor before. That's that's great. I love that. Um, so yeah, go ahead and uh, check it out. It's right below. Uh, this, uh, like I said, it's going to be two more weekends happening. 
And uh, what's next after Poe? What What are you having in store uh, for another audience? Well, another, be, it's um, going to be another theater. I'm going to be traveling. Uh, the, the after this after this next week, I'm going to be uh, traveling to, uh, across the Midwest, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois. Mm-hmm. I will uh, be doing a lot of shows uh, around there. And then I'll come back uh, in, uh, after I'll be gone for two weeks, and I'll come back, and then it'll be around November. And then I'll be doing Edgar Allan Poe at the uh, Magic Castle. Uh, my friend oh, wow. Micah Cover, the wonderful magician Michael Cover, hosts uh, an evening of uh, Edgar Allan Poe magic. And so um, Edgar Allan Poe will, will be performing, uh, not magic, he'll just be performing the Telltale Heart. But a bunch of magicians will be there performing Edgar Allan Poe magic. It's going to be a pr- pretty fun night. That's in November, uh, November the twenty first. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun. Uh, okay. Castle is a fun place. Yeah, I, Magic Castle was. is a very fun. Place. How do you get tickets? Because I, I hear it's so hard to get into. It's hard to get uh, tickets. Uh, do you know Micah? Do you know Micah Cover? No, but I need to know him because <laughs> um, <laughs> I gotta go. And Sebastian, Sebastian, you know Sebastian. Sebastian's a member. Oh yeah, yeah. So well, Sebastian, I don't know him Sebastian personally. Sebastian can get you in. Oh, well, you gotta. You, I'll tell you what. You, uh, you you tell him you want to go to the castle the next time he goes, and he'll he'll invite you, and then you go down with him, and you get in, and it's a really cool place. I mean, it's a castle. It was built like yeah. in the twenties in Hollywood, right up on the hill. And it's right. it's really cool. I mean, it's enormous. I mean, and it's talk about the perfect really fitting for fascinating. for your show. I mean, perfect. You can't setting. get better than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's very intimate and very uh, very uh, yeah. You have these different rooms, and you don't know where the next room is going to have, and um, it's all this magic and mentalist and magicians and oh yeah, mind readers. <laughs> Oh yeah, and really cool. So, I mean, and yeah, so it's it's kind of fun. It's it's a little, it's really fun. Uh, but uh, you go go there anytime, and, uh, and and like Sebastian goes quite often. But go there sometime, and um, and you know, everywhere everywhere you turn, there's a magician, and somebody's doing a trick, and it's just it's really a magical place. And I don't mean that as a pun. And it's yeah, really cool. Yeah, it's really is. cool. You'll love it. You'll but you love do it. have to yeah. have an invitation. You do have to have an from a member. I learned that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, but, can just but Sebastian gets them. Sebastian will take you. Okay. He goes. Hi, when Sebastian. he goes, he goes every he goes every week, usually. And, wow. Uh, and then he'll say he'll 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 say who wants to go, and you know you just okay. you know you just follow him on Facebook and or you know and go I'll go and if you're if you yeah. if you say it fast enough he'll put you on the list and you can go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, great. Great to know that. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, is there any way to follow? Um, and then I know there's actually different, um, what do you call them? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking about, I'm thinking about Magic Castle as I'm talking. But anyways, oh. um, <laughs> is there any uh, handles on social media to follow you or to to follow your progress? Yeah, my name. Uh, my name Duffy Hudson. Okay. Just follow. I have a, there's a fan page, a Duffy Hudson fan page. I'd love people to like. And then there's just my personal page, Duffy Hudson, and just be my friend. And and I'll, I post. I only post stuff about my performances, my shows. And uh, yeah. sometimes I'll post a picture of cute cute puppies or something. But I try to stay away from any weird stuff or any politics stuff or anything like that. Just stuff yeah. about my performances. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, I believe you. Yeah. I believe no, I'll post it. Post it. These are all. Yeah, yeah, very, very uh, controversial. Yeah. But uh, we live in an age where people are very sensitive to anything, and so uh, well, if they if they ban twice. if they ban the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> if they ban the Wizard of Oz. Right? They're pretty sensitive to anything. <laughs> Yeah, I find that very funny. Or uh, Alice in Wonderland. They, they, yeah. Or Alice in Wonderland. Or where's Waldo? Out loud. <laughs> you can hear about the Waldo. What, what's the problem? Why? Why did they ban? Where's Waldo? <laughs> I don't. Well, I find that really strange. They'll, they'll show you. They'll show you. They'll show you the graphic, and then you have to spot Waldo in a nude beat. Oh, right. <laughs> and a nude beach. Oh yes. 
<laughs> so it's really fun. I mean, I, I want to have that book so bad, and it's banned. So I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> really? That's funny. I would love to have that book. If I can get a hold Where's of Where's Walter on a nude uh, beach? I'd love that. I'm sure that's I'm sure That's hilarious. Fun. I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure it's out there yes. somewhere. Yes, he is. <laughs> Anyhow, Duffy, uh, thank you for calling today. It was a really great show. I'm looking forward to seeing you, you this so weekend. Much. And for those yeah, that are listening, please uh, please like your page, like um, uh, Force of Nature Productions. They they have the the best the best uh, shows on Halloween time. Uh, not only we have uh, Edgar Allan Poe, and we're gonna have Fallen Saints, and we also have um, Romeo and Juliet in Hell. Juliet in Hell. Romeo and Juliet in Hell is gonna, gonna be a blast. Coming up, yeah, yeah a that's a comedy though, but. It is a fun. A lot, um, yeah, sounds like a lot fun. of fun. Having yeah, it's great. Um, a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, so um, well, thank, thank you, you so again much. for calling, and we're gonna actually check it out with a song called "The Raven." If you believe it or not, there's a a group called um, Alan Parsons Project. I don't know if you ever heard yes. of them in the '80s or '70s, and they have a song called "Raven," and I thought it was a perfect way to end this uh, podcast today. Um, but yeah, thank you for calling me today. And thank do you, you want to take it out with a little, a little poetry before we do that? From sure. The... I'll do the first stanza of the, or a couple stanzas from the Raven. Once okay. upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. To some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. We are go for liftoff in T minus Hit the record that coming.